Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna take you through my favorite automotive hacks, tips and tricks uh, for working on your car. Some of these are common knowledge and maybe some of them aren't. So I hope you enjoy it and let me know what you think in the comment section down below. All right, we will start out with a very basic wrench trick, okay? Lots of people know this one, but if you don't, this is gonna be the most used one you'll have. So, so you got a really tight bolt like this. Uh, impact guns are all the rage. Not everybody has an impact gun. So to get more leverage on the bolt, you can actually grab another wrench, lock it in like this, and you see how much easier that, that comes off. So just a simple act of doubling up the wrench gets you so much more leverage, it doubles the leverage on the bolt that I can take this bolt off with one finger. Now, another variation you can use this is actually on Allen keys. Now, this isn't a great example because I could easily get a regular Allen key on here, but when you have an Allen key, an Allen head bolt in a tight place, you can actually put your Allen key in, same thing, put your wrench on, and loosen that bolt right off. All right, the next one we'll talk about here is cutting bolts. Uh, so I will cut this bolt and then I will show you how to make the threads work. Obviously, when the bolt is new, the threads go on good. All right, so our bolt is cut. I made kind of an ugly cut on purpose here. And you'll see threads they don't really want to work properly all right so what's going on here is if you look at the threads take this off for a sec you can see the threads of the bolt they've kind of they're not really straight anymore they've there's kind of multiple there's like kind of two threads on the tip of this bolt so what you want to do is you want to put this you want to grind it and you can put the bolts on, I don't know, 40, 30 degree angle. And when you grind it down, you don't really have to pay any attention to anything other than the angle. And you'll see these threads will work perfectly after. So let's grind this down. All right, so ground down, and there we go. See that? Threads work perfect. So they make a little tool that you can actually use on things like this, but I always kind of just taper the tip of the thread and works every time. All right, next one. Let's talk bolts. Uh, this is uh, a big one that, that I, I just, it always blows my mind how many people don't actually know this. But I can look at this one and tell you that that's a metric bolt. And I can look at that one and I can tell you that's a standard bolt. Now the difference is on the head of the bolt. So nine times out of 10, a metric bolt will either say 8.8 .8 or 10.9, so on and so forth. A standard bolt, in this case, a grade eight, has these little, you see the little lines on the head of the bolt? Grade five will have less lines, grade eight will have more lines. But yeah, right there, you look at the numbers, metric. See the, the lines there, standard. It is actually that easy. Okay, now while we're on the topic of bolts, say I need a, to use a longer bolt here and I wanna know if this one's the same thread as this one. The way you can tell if they're the same thread is if you put the two bolts side by side and you can interlock them like this, and you can pull like you they're super hard like you can see the threads stick together perfectly that is a surefire sign that you have the same thread and you know same size bolt now that exact same tip applies to taps as well so say i want to tap a hole for this bolt i grab this tap you see they they just slide off each other there's no grip there so that's the wrong thread so i grab another tap and right away, you can see these two, they interlock. So that's the correct thread. All right, next one, hose clamp. So if I ever have to cut a piece of tubing, I always take a hose clamp, slide it over the tubing, tighten it down, 
and that will give you a perfectly square surface. Not perfect, but very close to perfect. So when you mark your tubing, you cut on that line it leaves, you're gonna get a really, really nice straight cut. So I get this thing off of here now. You should also use a nut driver <laughs> on hose clamps. So anyways, you can see obviously I had two marks on there, but you get yourself a really nice square cut by using a hose clamp on a piece of tubing. Now that same hose clamp trick actually applies to silicone hoses as well. If you put a hose clamp on here and lightly tighten it down so you don't deform the silicone, you can actually use your X-Acto knife blade and trace right up against the hose clamp and get a really nice square cut on a silicone coupler. One more that I really love, uh, say I have to measure the distance between, for example, these two holes. If these two holes are the same size, what I see people often doing is trying to hold the caliper to try to figure out exactly where the center of the hole is. But the way I like to do this is I put the caliper in the hole and I actually measure one diameter and then I zero the caliper so you can see the caliper is open and it's at zero. Now, when I go outside to outside, that gives me the exact measurement because these two holes are the same side and essentially I've, you know, I've removed one radius and one radius. So that's a wicked little trick if you wanna get perfect hole centers. All right, just rattling through things here. I'm obviously super bored, uh, but Allen keys. So say you don't have a big Allen key like this. I think this is like a 17 mil Allen key. A lot of people don't own this and you probably will use it about five times in your life. One thing you can do is you can grab a bolt with a 17 mil head, take a nut, this is a standard nut because I don't use standard nuts, and you just weld, throw a weld around here. Now you can put a wrench on here and this end will act as your 17 mil Allen key. And I used this for a few years when I owned a Volkswagen, I need to drain the transmission fluid. So that trick works really well. All right, the next one here is kind of on the metal fab side of things again. But say I want to mark this pipe perfectly 180 degrees apart, or maybe you want a mark every 90 degrees. Whatever it is, what you do is you take a piece of masking tape and you wrap it around the pipe like so. And at the overlap point, you want to just leave a little bit of room. Okay, so these aren't perfectly lined up here. You can take your pen and mark a line. Essentially what you do then is you unwrap your piece of masking tape and you stick it to a flat surface. And you can see that I have one mark here and I have one mark here. So you take a tape measure and you measure those marks. And sorry, this is uh, this tape measure is, wow, that looks bad. Uh, so you see here, if you measure from end to end, you know, for the sake of this conversation, let's call it nine and a half inches, okay? So that means that at four, well, let's be a little more precise. It's actually nine and a, I'd say it's nine and a quarter inches. Um, so that means that at four and five eighths, that is our halfway point. So what we can do is then with the tape measure, you take your piece of tape, you can find your original mark on the pipe, which is here. And then you just relay out your piece of masking tape. You can sanity self you can sanity check yourself by making sure those marks line up. But now if you look right over here, that is exactly or good enough exactly 180 degrees apart. And you won't be able to do better than that with a tape measure, I, I promise you that.